Hey guys, I'm gonna do my best to keep up with this video, but this is gonna be a new format where I review hands from a session and we kind of go over them. So here we go, let's get right into it. Let me know if you like this format and uh, leave a thumbs up in the comments or uh, whatnot if you do. So here we've got a uh, king queen suited and uh, this is just a session I played this morning uh, recorded it and now we'll just go over some key hands that I thought could be valuable or interesting a little global poker tracking spreadsheet uh, so this is obviously going to be an ISO and uh, let me see why I picked this hand Oh, okay. So here's a spot where I must have gotten distracted by something. Normally this is a C bet. Uh, when I ISO, I usually am way ahead of my opponent's range, but I got distracted and checked for some reason. And I decided to adjust my bet size on the turn down uh, because once the opponent actually checks back the flop, their range is gonna be even weaker than it already was. So I go ahead and use one third on the turn, um, which is going to be slightly exploitative but uh, it gets the job done. I just kind of wanted to show an example of, uh, you know, a small adjustment you can make once you find yourself in a situation where your opponent should be very, very weak and potentially overfolding. Uh, let's see, the next hand we're gonna look at, I believe is the ace queen in the lower right. Yeah, so we've got an ace queen in the lower right. We obviously open. I am opening to pot at 20 no limit. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, this is part of my $300 to $100,000 challenge that I'm doing in 2019. Uh, here we open, now we get donked into, which is uh, obviously sort of a unique situation, not gonna happen that often, but we have a fairly standard play where we will uh, flat with almost our entire range that's going to, you know, we'll, we'll either fold or call. We usually don't raise these very often. Um, and now I have a situation where uh, with most of my range, I will actually want to size up here. So I just go for a pot size bet. And I just wanted to show the bet size adjustment here. When we have a draw heavy board, we want to be careful not to, not to only size up with our value or only size up with our flush draws or anything like that. We really want to have a balanced, uh, bet size in this spot. Um, the only thing I don't love about it is that 910 got there. We obviously don't have that, but uh, with the flush draw out there, I think sizing up is okay. So again, this is just gonna be some interesting hands or some hands that I thought uh, might make for interesting learning uh, points. Uh, or, yeah, I mean, I tried not to make them purely for entertainment value. <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully the video is also entertaining. I wanted to make it short and condensed. I didn't want just a video of me grinding. So here's a situation where I thought that, uh, because I sort of felt it at the time, uh, I just wanted to kind of show that like you, you really want to not worry too much about things like, you know, two tens on the board, things like that. We really should not be afraid of stuff like this, especially against a guy who has half, you know, a short stack. Um, my only point here is to like, don't overthink this. You have pocket Kings. You're never folding. You just want to basically go, go for it. Uh, this next hand is on the same table and I want to review this one real quick. I want to see if there is anything, uh, that I would change about it. It's sort of a unique situation because it's a three handed pot. We have a, you know, a flush draw, obviously. Uh, we're going to be calling. We hit our flush, which, you know, usually a good thing even in a three-way pot. Uh, I go ahead, I use, um, I do the same thing here. I, I size up a little bit. I'm not sure if I necessarily need to do that. Uh, looking at how deep we are, I'm not sure I love this. I basically snap get it in. Um, I don't really want, you know, somebody with an eight to have a lot of uh, options for getting their full house. I want to get my money in ahead against an eight. Uh, unfortunately, we end up in there against a, uh, a better flush. It, looking back on it, I'm not sure there's too much we could do. We could probably get away from it on the river if we just called the turn. 
Um, so if we had some more information on that player, I actually think we could hopefully play the hand a little better. Just call the raise on the turn and then evaluate the river and get away on the worst uh, the worst rivers. Um, so I'm not sure that I love that hand, but I don't I don't fault myself for playing it that way. I wouldn't fault anyone else for playing it that way. But I do think that um, there could be some more value in um, in just calling on the turn, especially since we have position, right? When we raise on the turn, we give up our positional advantage. And uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of a mistake to uh, be giving that up uh, when, you know, the draw is already in. The, the boats are already there. The flushes are already there. Might as well just control the pot a little bit and then use our positional advantage so that all being said i think calling the turn is better the only advantage to raising the turn again we're back on the last hand still is that we get it in against a one card flush draw uh, so here we've got you know similar situation where you know it's not the best uh flop for our hand but you know we have an overpair the other thing i want to point out is that we do want to keep going for value blind versus blind um every time i study blind versus blind situations i am shocked by how light we need to get it in and looks like i'm considering calling and then i just go for the jam i realize that it's a draw heavy board our opponent can actually have a lot of draws here that he might not want to give up on he can have top pair and i think that it's better to just get it all in on the flop when our opponent has the most uh, equity and the board isn't that scary. So I go ahead and do that. We get lucky, he has a flush draw and we hold. Uh, again, that's sort of just a unique blind versus blind situation that I wanted to show off uh, because we do need to lighten up our requirements a lot in those situations. And that's also part of why I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive is because I expect opponents to be willing to get things uh, in lighter. Okay, another ace queen offsuit hand. Common, common stuff. Uh, so I started with some hands that I thought went fairly well. Obviously, the flush draw didn't go that well, but I wanted to have a mix of, you know, not just showing hands we win or not just showing hands we lose, but a good mix of hands based on whether or not I thought there was something valuable to talk about in them, not the actual results of the hands. If you guys are interested in the results of the challenge and how it's going, you can kind of tune in to Twitch. I've got a a link to my results tracking uh, spreadsheet on Google. So here I actually go for a raise with ace queen. Um, it's a very dry board with top pair. This is a board that I'll be raising, you know, fairly often with uh, any kind of like backdoor draws um, because it has pretty good fold equity. The ace high isn't ideal, but uh, I don't mind the raise. <laughs> and our opponent pots it. And I don't have any notes on this opponent this just sort of, uh, you know, seems a little bizarre to me. I figure I've got, you know, very little left. And so I go ahead and put it all in. Um, you know, looking back at this, I'm not really sure how we could change things on the turn. It's very difficult to get away on the turn. But you see that I immediately go and take a note. Um, I don't know. Did he pot size? Yeah, I think he did make a pot size bet on the... I guess he potted it on the flop and on the turn. And uh, and yeah, I raised the flop and then uh, also like raised the turn. So I think I overplayed my hand a little bit. Um, you know, ace queen is pretty good button versus big blind, but I think I overplayed it a little, probably um, a little bit too aggressive for an unknown opponent. And I should have played a standard call on the flop, call on the turn, call on the river. Uh, whether or not he would have sized up enough to get all in by the river, you know, we could have determined that as we go. Also, by the river, if, you know, the river gets scary enough, we can probably let go of our hand um, when an unknown player is potting it, uh, playing that aggressively. Again, the pot size bet is a little bit of a um, bet sizing tell that most players have that leans them towards value. So I think I need to be a little more uh, cautious when I'm playing against players I don't have any notes on and give them sort of the benefit of the doubt for, you know, the most default uh, strategy. So here we go have a, you know, a, a line where I have a pretty good draw and it misses on the river. 
And I decide that with my queen high, you know, this is a situation, we kind of studied this earlier today, where we really just need to bluff here. Like, it just has to be a bluff almost 100% of the time. And so I just wanted to show that because there's going to be the very last hand is going to be a hand where I should have bluffed and didn't in a very similar situation to what my last video was, which was a sort of in-depth study guide. So now I have an ace-queen offsuit where I have top pair, uh, top kicker with a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. And I go ahead, I, I lead out for a very small size on the flop. And um, I think this opponent just shoves all in, or basically shoves all in. And I, you know, I didn't really know what to make of this, but top pair, top kicker, there's, you know, heart draws, there's straight draws. Um, I guess I kind of lucked out on this one. I don't have a real great reason for, if the other opponent had called, I probably can fold, but top pair, top kicker on the flop, even three-handed um, versus what appears to be a very volatile play. If that was a regular, I could probably fold. But against a non-regular, when I have the um, you know queen of hearts, yeah, it makes it pretty tough. I, I think I got kind of lucky there. I think actually more frequently than not, that's a better hand. Um, uh, this is the hand where we end up in position, uh, very similar to what we studied in our last video. Um, again, it's a, an advanced strategy guide that should already be uploaded on YouTube. We call here with the flush draw. We, um, you know, still have the, the flush draw. Our opponent checks. I end up uh, going ahead and uh, stabbing. Now, I don't know exactly what the note on this opponent was, but they have a green tag, so I don't know them to be particularly aggressive at this point. They check raise. I can't fold, obviously, um, in position. And then we brick here. And most opponents that have the top of their range, once they check raise, they're betting again. Um, this opponent ends up timing down for a bit and then checking. And I basically consider that I have the nut no pair hand because I have the queen. So queen high here is good enough. Um, actually, wow, I did that a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, you can see that I immediately start taking a note. Uh, but what I studied the, this morning, which is a video that should already be out by now, is uh, the situations where... It really is almost always better to err on the side of aggression when your draw misses and you wind up with air on the river. Unless it's ace high, like a very, you know, a clear ace high, uh, then you can basically just uh, bet and you can bet pretty big with all of your missed draws. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this series. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and ask questions in the comments. Till next time, this is you, Rounder. You guys keep on grinding.